You'll never find more polarizing opinions on a first-person shooter than with Doom 3. In fact, the only other game I can think of that comes close to offering up such opposing crowds on whether or not it's good or bad is Quake 2 and also, funnily enough, Quake 4. But a lot of the complaints you hear about this thing come more from it not meeting subjective expectations, ignoring that it succeeded perfectly at what it set out to do. Look, I'll admit that I've got a bit of a love-hate relationship with this thing, but I really do think it's a game that ages in reverse. And every time I come back to replay it, I've got a little bit more appreciation for all of the stuff that it manages to pull off. From the sound design, the admittedly slow burn to its campaign, through to the redesigning of the series' iconic enemies and weapons. And one of the most popular mods for Doom 3, and one that I've been repeatedly asked to take a look at for years now, is the so-called Perfected Doom mod. At some point during the mod's development, I'm sure it started out as a way of tweaking and changing a bunch of the parameters to how this game actually works, but the latest version is just this kind of weird mix of design choices and weird inclusions. And it's really more like Brutal Doom 3 at this point than anything else. I mean, it's not really about subtle differences, more so it just completely changes the way entire mechanics work. But since I'm always ready to defend Doom 3's honor, not to mention it also happens to be around Halloween, I thought it might be worth going and taking a look at the second most popular Doom 3 mod, just to see what its definition of perfected is. Now what this mod does first and foremost is alter the gameplay and to a lesser extent the visuals, and even if you're not all that familiar with the game, like most of the people I see online trashing it clearly aren't, even then it's kind of hard to not notice just how much stuff they've buggered around with. One of the first things I noticed when I got knee deep into this thing was how a lot of the floors in the levels are now covered in way more blood. And it's common to walk through environments and just be ankle deep in bodily fluid. It kind of reminds me of walking out of your mum's bedroom. Schwacked. Even during combat 2 you'll notice enemies expending a whole heap of the red stuff like it's going out of style. You'll see new enemies in the form of pain elementals and spectre imps, and there's minor visual changes to certain demons, like the imps, the maggots, and the revenants, who now have red lights on their shoulders, because, I don't know, red lights are cool, I guess? When you head to hell for the first time, you'll even notice how the demons have these glowing symbols across their bodies, which actually looks kind of awesome. Makes them seem a lot more threatening and frightening to look at. Perfected Doom 3 includes a lot of these so-called next-gen visual options, which have also been used in one of the most famous Doom 3 mods, which is the Sick mod. Which allowed you to add in so many obnoxious visual effects that it could honestly make your eyes bleed. This list is pretty damn extensive, from things like motion blur, bloom and depth of field, all of which are highly customizable. And look, I do think the vanilla game looks way better, but if just for the sake of comparison, I'm going to keep some of these settings turned on so you can see the difference. To be honest, I don't mind some of these effects. I think the HDR lighting looks kinda decent when it's toned down a bit. And I don't mind a minimal depth of field effect when reloading weapons or interacting with terminals either. But it is definitely a subjective choice, and you don't have to use any of these if you don't want to. You can just play through the mod with the gameplay changes alone, it's just people wanting to spruce the game up a bit visually are going to enjoy how extensive a bunch of these options are. About the only thing I won't abide by is people using bloom and motion blur. I think if you unironically like these effects, well, you really are dead to me. I mean, it's in the same league as people who like to use film grain and chromatic aberration. Or those other freaks who play games with the mouse controls inverted. Dangerously sick people! But it's the gameplay where there's the biggest overhaul, and honestly, there's almost too much stuff to mention. Some of these are just simple additions, like now there's a basic melee attack when holding a weapon. You can even dual wield a couple of these too, like the pistol and the super shotgun, which, yeah, that's been added to the roster too. During a couple of levels, friendly marines are going to be around to help you out too, which kind of reminds me a bit of the friendly marines you could find and rescue in Brutal Doom. Enemies now do a lot more damage, and certain demons even explode when they're killed. The Kaka Demon being a good example of this, which is accompanied by a sound effect so horribly mixed that it just comes out like ear raping distortion. It's also kind of a dumb idea for an enemy type that almost always prioritizes moving into close range with the player. 
However, I don't think these are all that life-changing. It's the other ones where it starts to kind of mess around with Doom 3's gameplay loop. I mean, for starters, the flashlight is completely removed, replaced with a shoulder-mounted flashlight instead. Now, I'm not going to go into a whole song and dance about this, and again, look, I can understand why certain people prefer this. Just kind of completely changes the tone of the game, but I mean, considering this is also a mod that adds in dozens of weapon modifications, I don't know, I guess complaining about that might be a bit of a moot point. Another big one is that medkits aren't instant use anymore. Instead, you've got a medkit meter down the bottom right of the screen, and they can instead be used when needed the most, which actually makes combat a bit more tense, and you have to kind of factor in that medkit usage time. This is also the same for the Berserk power-up as well, for the couple of times you actually get to use it. There's no more stamina bar anymore either, and when you sprint now, the weapon gets lowered, like you're playing Call of Duty or something. And I gotta say that I think this is one of the dumbest changes in the entire mod, because you can't sprint and fire your weapon anymore. Which makes it difficult to move and shoot against bigger enemies like the Hell Knights, without taking splash damage from their projectiles. Looking at each individual weapon, there's almost too many changes to list without sitting here for hours until we all start to bleed from our assholes. I mean, this could be simple things like the shotgun now holding 10 shells instead of 8, or the chain gun now holding 450 bullets instead of only 60, which makes absolutely no sense. And I offer that up as Exhibit A for people who are trying to tell me that this mod is balancing out the gameplay. <laughs> What is kind of interesting though is that all of the weapons now have two different firing modes, what the mod calls combat mode, along with an alternate and often special attack for each mode as well. So for the machine gun for instance, combat mode 1 fires the weapon normally, but for some reason the accuracy is all over the shop. And the alternate fire mode for this shoots out 20 bullets at once, almost kind of like a shotgun. The chain gun also has a similar alternate fire, which fires 30 shots at once instead of one, which is as broken as it sounds. Fire the machine gun in combat mode 2, however, and it's now a lot more accurate, with each bullet hitting right on your crosshair, kind of like the vanilla machine gun. And now the alternate fire in combat mode 2 is going to empty the entire magazine in a couple of seconds. Then finally, the weapon special for the machine gun is a scope that can be used for more precise shots, using 5 bullets at once instead of 1. With a super shotgun, as you'd kind of expect, you can either fire this bad boy 1 or 2 barrels at a time, with the combat mode instead allowing you to aim down the sights. Yeah, ADS in Doom 3, which for a mod that claims to be perfecting this thing, is about as un-Doom 3 as you could possibly get. I don't know, I guess they had the sprinting animation added in, they may as well have just thrown in iron sights too. There's also the option to dual wield these things, which I have to admit is pretty damn cool. And you can dual wield the pistols as well, which shows off one of the most bizarre reload animations I think I've ever seen. <laughs> This does, if nothing more though, add a whole lot of depth to how you use some of these weapons. And then on top of all of that shit, the mods also just flat out changed the way a lot of these weapons work from the ground up. The plasma rifle, for instance, fires completely differently. It's now got the sound effect from the original Doom, the projectiles are a lot smaller but also a lot faster. And there's now a little mini motion scanner on the top of the weapon, kind of like the one seen in the Aliens films and the AVP games. The chainsaw has been given a fire effect, which causes enemies to burst into flames when taking damage, which I have to admit is kind of rad. Hit scanning weapons like the pistol, the machine gun, shotgun, and chain gun now almost work more like projectile weapons, with there being decreased bullet velocity. The pistol now fires a lot quicker as well, and almost requires aiming down the sights to be accurate at anything other than close range. The spread on the chain gun, kind of like the spread on the machine gun, has also been widened considerably. For no other reason that I can fathom, aside from just maybe trying to balance out the damage and the fire rate it has. Or maybe the fact that it can be fired 450 fucking times now before reloading. The rocket launcher though is just ridiculous, creating even larger explosions than its vanilla counterpart and making the whole goddamn screen shake. Because a weapon that was already widely unviable for most of the game totally needed increased blast radius and splash damage. But then we come to probably the most important weapon in Doom 3, and just Doom games in general, and that's the shotgun. 
a source of never-ending arguments online and the target of constant criticism by people who are upset that it doesn't behave the way they want it to. Because it doesn't conform to some arbitrary, run-of-the-mill condition for what they expect in an FPS shotgun, it's written off as being bad. I mean, look, saying you don't like this thing is fine, but saying it's bad because it doesn't fit in line with how you want to use it is incorrect. And this thing works perfectly well if it's used the way that Daddy Carmack intended. Doom 3's shotgun is the ultimate filter, and it really highlights the stubbornness of people who refuse to adapt to a game's mechanics. Kind of reminds me a lot of how some people recently disliked Doom Eternal's combat because they refused to utilize the game's resource management tools in regards to getting back your health, armor, and ammo off enemies. I guess it was just simpler to bitch and moan about it than to adapt and play within those parameters. Anyway, again in Doom 3, it's a bit of a stupid argument. It's like complaining about a Phillips head screwdriver not working on a slot head, or trying to play tennis with a golf club and complaining because you can't hit anything. I'm not sure which echo chamber perpetuated that this thing isn't any good. To be fair though, there is definite RNG involved with the pellet spread, but it's almost always consistent as long as you're using it the way it's meant to be, which is face to face with whatever you're shooting at. Doom 3 was all about combat in tight environments and at medium to close range. The harsh, stencil shadows created by the id Tech 4 engine were used as a means to allow enemies to almost ambush the player. Allowing an enemy to be meters away from you but still hidden until they came into the light. The shotgun was almost a matter of trying to keep the enemy at a close enough distance to keep the weapon effective, but also not too close that you were in their melee range. However, one of the main things this mod does is just disregard all that entirely and allow the shotgun to be more viable from long ranges, to the point that you can almost kill enemies with it from the other side of a goddamn room. That tension and tug of war for fighting space is completely thrown out of the window and you can safely take enemies out from a much safer distance. I don't think it's an outright bad change, but it is hard to deny that it changes how the weapon is used pretty much across the board. And in a laundry list of modifications, this is the one that I think makes the biggest difference, at least early on in the campaign anyway. Now most of the stuff in this mod is highly subjective, but there's two things that I think are objectively bad. One is that the whole thing runs like absolute shit, and the other one is the inclusion of these god-awful hell levels that have been added in after you defeat the Guardian. I mean, there's all these fancy new effects and additions to the presentation, but it's really come at the expense of the overall performance. And this thing chugs along worse than an old man on a mechanical scooter with a flat tire. Probably not helping either that the enemy corpses no longer turn to ash and fade away anymore. Now you've got the bodies piling up all over the place and it just tanks the performance. It's just this abundance of visual clutter thrown at the screen without any semblance of consideration for just basic stability, let alone visibility. I mean, a lot of the time your vision is obscured by smoke and particle effects that make it difficult to see what you're aiming at. Taken on the Lost Souls is a pretty good example of this. And the final fight against the Cyber Demon is also another good one. When the Cyber Demon fires its rockets, just like when the player now shoots them, the whole screen shakes in a similar fashion and is accompanied by a distorted explosion sound effect. Only now, because this asshole's gonna spam them far more than you do, the screen is often constantly shaking. Fuck. And this kind of follows on to my other complaint about these extra hell levels they've added in. Now, instead of going back to the Delta Labs after defeating the Guardian, there's three all new levels, and these are clearly fan-made. And they just look so different artistically to the other levels. Not to mention, there's just really no point to any of them. All it does is ruin the pacing of the whole campaign. For one of these, I couldn't even figure out where I was supposed to go, and I had to no-clip around the map until I found the way forward. The final level before you can head back to Mars includes a boss fight against the Icon of Sin, which, I don't know, could have been cool, but it isn't even creative in the slightest. It's just the Icon's head coming out of a wall and you shoot at it until it dies. And I was also kind of disappointed that when I no-clipped through the back of this thing, there wasn't some kind of Romero easter egg either. Playing these levels combined with Doom 3's original campaign would be like eating lobster at a fancy restaurant, and then halfway through your meal they take your plate away and make you eat pizza pockets. 
if you want to mess around with the weapons and the enemies and all that stuff, be my guest. But don't make me play through your crappy fan-made maps that make no sense being included in the campaign. If nothing else though, at least the mod is kind enough to have a level select option on the main menu. So my advice here is just to skip these new levels entirely. Overall though, I do think that the positives outweigh the negatives with this mod, and if you are after a new way to replay through this underappreciated game, well, there are worse ways to do it. But is this perfected Doom 3? Nah son, it ain't. It's about as perfected as cosmetic surgeries being to Sophie Monk. Still, it is a free mod, and it even comes with a custom campaign to play through as well, which takes place exclusively in Hell, which in 2020 still pales in comparison to the toilet paper aisle of a supermarket, but is still super creepy at the same time. And at the end of the day, I'll condone anything that gets more people interested in Doom 3. 